Good afternoon, everybody. It's Lynn, the leather bag lady. How are you all today? These glasses are, my eyes are getting so bad. These glasses are no longer any use. <laughs> hey, there we go. I've got different glasses for so many things. Close up. Yesterday I was peeling potatoes. I needed glasses to peel freaking potatoes. It's getting all bullshit. Is no joke, people. It's no joke. Anyway, back to the task at hand, showing you today's beautiful, I'm going to turn the light out. Uh, well, it is a little truer to color with the light out. It is a beautiful kind of crinkle finish, orange, kind of slash red. I'll put the light back on now. It's a really unique bag. Love the brown top handle area. Little uh, pocket that goes all the way to the bottom. I don't know if you would get a... Eh, I don't think you'd get a phone in there. Oh, yes. It's a little bit of a squeeze. But I got my huge big uh, Samsung phone in there. I didn't think that was possible. So this little bag has a couple of ways you can use it. You can use it as a little bit of a top handle or a clutch. Now this bag I've had for quite some time and the designer has since changed her logo. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. It's a B and an E up in the air. So this brand is from the UK. The uh, young ladies, her last name is Cawthra. I can't remember what her first name is. Cynthia, I think maybe. I'm not sure. But her brand goes by the name. Let me get it right. Belen, Belen, Enchandia, Echandia. So the story is this young lady was a law student in England. And for whatever reason, now her name is definitely not Hispanic, but for whatever reason, she had a connection with Spain and it changed the, the trajectory of her career. So she was making bags while she was in law school and uh, decided to just be a fashion designer instead of going into law school. I am sure the two have married themselves together and have helped her along the way. But I've had um, one other bag. Now, she's changed the logo because I, I had some details on this brand from years ago, like six, seven years ago. So I knew I had some information on this brand because anything from the UK will kind of give me a reason to kind of take a little bit more attention or pay a little bit more attention because that's where I'm from. So it, uh, you know, there is a little bit of a seam here. So it is going to give you kind of a gusset that technically isn't there. It's just kind of a, a dart on either end. So you're going to be able to get a few bits and pieces in here. I just think it is so unique. This orange distress that has the deeper colors in the veins. It's so cool. I really like it. I think it's very unique. It's very different. And it is just one of those little small items that I am now able to... Um, to list. So there we go. Uh, shop at the shed last night. Thank you to all of those who stopped by and spent a moment or two. Got a couple of bags that are on their way to St. Catharines and i um, grateful for that. So thank you. And uh, yeah, we will be doing uh, shop at the shed tomorrow as well. So I'm just kind of starting to look for what bags I'm going to offer you tomorrow looking at my shelves here, that are starting to get a little uh, bare, dare I say. So I think what's going to happen is I am going to be going to the storage unit and getting a lawn bag out of the storage unit, which is just unbelievable. 
but I do have a few bags that are kind of laying around here. So I don't know, maybe I've got enough to fill the shelves. Probably do have enough to fill the shelves. I am so anxious to remind myself of what I have in the storage unit because I got some good stuff in there and I just can't remember what it is. So I will get working on that. But once uh, my shows get back online, I'm booking for next month, um, then I think I'm going to be emptying that storage unit quite quickly because um, that means I will have a collection for Etsy, a collection for Shop at the Shed, and a collection for my in-person shows. So, and I absolutely have enough. I'm actually going to be taking maybe a handful of belts into the house. Um, did I show you? It's in the house, so I don't have it to hand, but I have the most amazing um, dark brown suede with orange suede circles and a black leather edging on the orange circles shoulder bag made in Italy I my mom when my sister and I were little my mom used to be a seamstress for it was a uh a company called Cohen's in Scotland, in Glasgow. And they were on contract for Marks and Spencer's. So my mom worked as a seamstress there when she was like 16, 17 years old. And she used to make all my sister and I's clothes to the point where we would beg her not to make us clothes anymore. Because we literally looked like a couple of curtain panels. My sister would have the same dress on and so would I. And we would always kind of be on either side of my grandma or my mom or my dad. So the joke was that Julie and I looked like a couple of curtain panels. And we had brown floor length uh, pinafer dresses that my mom made that were chocolate brown with orange circles on them. This bag was such a trip down memory lane for me. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, good Lord, those dresses. I wonder if I could find a picture of them. Should I? I don't know. There is a picture somewhere, but I just don't know where it is. I don't know if I've got it or if it's I don't know. Maybe I have it. Maybe I'll uh, spend some time looking for it. But anyway, that was uh, this morning's uh, activities. I did my little workout and I have for the second time moisturized two beautiful fossil bags. One really large tote that has a shoulder strap and a cross body strap. And then another one that I'm still trying to decide if it's vintage. I think it is. So I probably will list that as a vintage bag. It is beautiful. They are brown and thick leather and they just looked very dry. So I have moisturized twice with my leather better. And then I set about cleaning the orange suede circles on that bag. They were quite dirty. So what I did was I spray and washed the circle, left it for half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour. And then I got my, um, my pot scrubber that is like, it's a non scratch scrubber. And, um, I just rubbed the circles. I wash suede. I put suede in the washing machine. The only reason I didn't put this particular bag in the washing machine is I was nervous that the black leather lining around the orange circle would bleed. And that is a lesson I've learned the hard way a few times. I've ruined a few good bags by not paying attention to a lighter. Like I've showed you this bag before. But just to highlight my point is that if this was white, say, or if this was a very like uh, blush pink or something like that, there is a good chance that this maybe not this kind of a leather, but if it was a darker, 
it could bleed into the leather color. And I would rather it be dirty than it ruined by uh, color uh, transfer, color bleeding. So that is something that I am very aware of now because I've learned the hard way. I've tried it. So I am giving you the benefit of my information. So what I do when I wash suede, I either put it in the washing machine if I can, or I spot wash it and I soak it. It's not just, you know, a little, you know, whatever. During the drying process, I am constantly agitating the suede so that it doesn't dry hard because the nap in um, suede is the thing that gives it its luster. It's the thing that makes it hellish to photograph because it always looks like it's stained or there's marks. It's just the shadows from the nap. So it'll be interesting to see how well this actually works for me. So I'm also going to pick up a roll of um, foam underlay. If you have received a bag from me at any point, you know that that's what I roll. I uh, put roll. I put that over my bags for shipping. It is something that I. There are bags that absolutely need it, like anything that has like a chain strap or a bulky uh, buckle, I will wrap it around so it doesn't mark the leather. And there's some bags that don't require it. Like, for example, this bag wouldn't require it at all, but I still wrap it in there. In the early days of my Etsy shop, I had, you know, a few people commenting on the lack of care that was taken in wrapping the bag. So, um... Yeah, I learned that kind of the hard way as well. Your customer expects a certain amount of uh, care and attention to be taken to their item. Because let's face it, once they've paid for it, it's theirs. And that is why I try to ship as quickly as I can. Because I don't want anything happening to somebody's bag that is now in my charge. So um, I think if anything, oh, look how wrinkled I am, my goodness me. I'm starting to, um, my sweaters are starting to pile too tightly. So it's, uh, it's putting wrinkles and everything. I look like a hobo, but anyway, so I'm starting to, um, you know, get very particular about just because I know better and I know what customers want and I know what customers expect. And I mean, it's, it's all about, um, exceeding your customer's expectation. I learned that very early in life that if you go a little bit above and beyond, your customer will always appreciate that. And I do that. I try and do that in everything. Um, you know, my, my kids used to come to work with me years ago when I worked at the retirement home. I think I've shared this story before. And Harry, my son, I would bring them after Christmas because getting the facility, I used to work at a uh, retirement home. I am a recreational therapist by trade and I ran an activity department for a 65 bed retirement home in Ancaster for four years. And Christmas was a wonderful time, but it was a stressful time because decorating a facility is a lot of work. And I was there by myself. So I would bring the kids, um, not necessarily to help me set up, but definitely to help me tear it down because they would be off uh, on uh, you know Christmas vacation. So it was a little ornament, I remember. And I had said to Harry because my activity room was in the basement. I said, could you take that downstairs? And, you know, he put it on the table. Like he took it downstairs. He did as I asked, but he just put it on the table, which was clearly going to be in the way. So when I came down and I thought, mm, okay, so I kind of pulled him to one side. I said, Harry, I did ask you to bring it down. Thank you. But put it somewhere where it makes sense. You know, putting it on the table is just a very easy way to get rid of it out of your hand. But put it somewhere where I'm not going to have to touch it again until either I put it away where I want it to go or, you know, I said, just use your noodle, you know, go a little bit above and beyond. Yes, I asked you to bring it downstairs. Yes, you did that. But clearly sitting in 
in the middle of my activity table is not where it goes. So um, anyway, just my way of learning my lesson from an experience I had when I was quite young with my dad buying my mom a pair of silk pajamas for Christmas, which my mom is not a silk pajama lady, but my dad wanted to buy her a pair of silk pajamas. And we went to Ports International in Oakville Place. And I do believe it was either Christmas Eve or the night, the day before. And they did not have what my dad wanted for my mom. The lady in this store got the yellow pages out when that used to be a thing. And if you are out there and you don't know what yellow pages are, you're much younger than me, obviously. Google it. And um, she found a store and called the store, asked the uh, sales assistant at that store if they had what my dad was looking for. They did. And asked that lady to stay open until we got there. And I have never forgotten that. And that is kind of how I try my hardest to run my business, run my life, run my interactions with people, and try to just go that little bit above and beyond. Oh, having a hot flush. I had to close the door because it is so sunny outside. You can kind of see it right there. It's cold though, Leather Bag Lady Weather Report. It is quite chilly outside today. But I'm going to sit out there because I need the vitamin D. And, oh, I don't know. It's maybe in the sun it'll be better. But um, last night we, didn't, we really didn't do much of anything. Um, Pius is not napping. So by kind of 9, 9.30, he's falling asleep on the couch. So I kicked him off to bed last night. And... Uh, yeah, he's doing really well. He's out in the truck, not delivering flour yet, as I've mentioned uh, previously. But he's out doing his thing. He's uh, getting yelled at by uh, the new cameras that are in the truck or whatever. It's really frustrating. I was talking to him earlier and I could hear it beeping in the background. I was like, that's got to be driving you nuts. And he was like, it absolutely is. So anyway, that is it for me today. Uh, what are we doing tonight? We're at... We might be going to the races tonight. Uh, Pius was just passing um, Mohawk Raceway. And I, it's somewhere I've always wanted to go. And he's like, well, let's go tonight. And I'm like, yeah, you're going to be up crazy early in the morning. But he said he doesn't care. So I don't know. Like I just said, 9, 930 and he's falling asleep. So maybe we'll leave it for another night. Maybe, maybe even tomorrow night we could go. We'll see. We'll see. Have a great rest of the day, everybody. And I will see you tomorrow, uh, either for our vintage bag experience or our shop at the shed. Bye, everybody.